Okay, let's continue on looking at these logarithms. So the derivative for y equals ln of root x. So logs are kind of interesting um, because a lot of times they can be some uh, really complex looking function, but there's ways around it to make it not so complex. It's like the square root of x, that's just ln of x to the half. Well, with logarithms, any exponent you can pull down to the front. And now, this derivative is a lot easier to do than that one. So the half just stays. The derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x. And so it's just 1 over 2x. So if you have these like massive looking quantities like in this one, like oh my gosh, you can use log properties to rewrite it and kind of break it apart. So the cube root becomes a one third. And then the quotient with logarithms means you get to subtract. So it'll be ln of x minus four minus ln of x plus 4. And then you can do the derivative of this as opposed to the derivative of that nasty looking thing there. So the 1 third stays. The derivative of ln of x minus 4. Uh, so just the x minus 4 goes underneath. The derivative of x minus 4 is 1. And then just do the same thing over here. So the x plus 4 goes underneath. The derivative of x plus 4 is 1. And then the only thing left to really do is just get a common denominator. Which is x minus 4, x plus 4. Uh, and then if you simplify all the tops, uh, it actually comes out to equal 8. And then the one third that was hanging out in the front, uh, the three in the denominator just sticks in the denominator. Okay, uh, let's change the base. Example E. So the one's on top, the x underneath, as well as ln of seven, or ln of your base. Okay, so let's do that again. Or F. So anytime you have the derivative of a log, whether it's a log base something or an ln, you're going to end up with fractions. So I just put a fraction. So whatever's inside the log goes underneath, as well as ln of the base, or ln of 7. And then on top is the derivative of what's inside the log, so the 2x. plus e to the x, and there you go. <clears throat> okay, uh, example seven, find the derivative of each function. So these, um, these are gonna be a little bit more algebra intensive. Um, one of the hardest things about calculus is the algebra being utilized as opposed to the actual calculus. Like the power rule is not hard to, to use at all, um, but there can be some pretty intense algebra because uh, you got to be able to manipulate functions and around and see how they play out and so on and so forth. So these next two examples are going to be um, like that. So let's get started. Okay, so for g or g of x, we've got to use the product rule because uh, you have a product as well as the chain rule because you've got stuff inside of a radical. So we're going to start with the product rule. So the derivative of 1 half x squared is x times the radical. And then it flip-flops. So now you have to do the derivative of this, the radical part. So the power pulls down, decrease it by 1, Then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So 
So that right there, this is just the derivative of root 16 minus x squared. So now I have to finish out the product rule by multiplying by whatever was in the front term, which was your 1 half x squared. So there's the calculus. Now you have to do the algebra to simplify and finish it. So this front thing, I can't really do anything else, but in this back one, I can do some more. Um, so like <clears throat> uh, the two and one of the halves will cancel out. I uh, can also pull the negative to the front. Uh, x times x squared is x to the third. Um, the one half that's left, whichever one you choose, that two in the denominator stays in the denominator. And then this quantity with the negative exponent, I'm gonna flip it down and change it back to a square root. So some of you are going, all right, yeah, we're done. Well, no, you're not. Um, because we want to get this into one term because of what's coming in the next chapter. So you got to combine it into one fraction. So just get a common denominator. So you got to multiply out that 2 root 16 minus x squared to this term. So that would be a 2x. And the radicals are exactly the same. So the radical gets canceled off because you'd have a radical squared or square root squared. And then minus x to the third. Distribute the two x and combine like terms. Okay, and there you go. So as long as you can get to here, and it's just a matter of the algebra to finish it. So if you're struggling with fractions and like finding common denominators and how they work, you're gonna wanna brush up on those skills because those are not gonna go away. Okay, let's go on to part B. Now part B, you've got a quotient, so you guessed it, you gotta use the quotient rule. Okay, so the derivative of the top is one times the denominator minus now the derivative of the denominator. So this is where the chain rule comes in. <clears throat> so the one half pulls down, power decreases by one, multiplied by the derivative of the inside and then multiply by the top. And then it's all over the denominator squared. So the square and the square root cancel off. Okay. So let's clean this up a little bit. So root t to the fourth plus two, and then minus The one half and the four become two. T to the third times T is T to the fourth. And then the negative exponent, I'm gonna flip it and change it back to a radical. Okay. So now we got to simplify this because you cannot leave fractions within fractions. So there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, the one that's most efficient to me is that we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator between all of your fractions. So the only denominator that's in this entire thing uh, is this guy right here because this doesn't have one and neither does this. So we're multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of t to the fourth plus two. 
And what this will do is it uh, will clear out any little fraction that you have inside this giant one because this is going to distribute to this term and of this one. And when it goes to this one, they're going to cancel each other out. So root 2 to the 4th plus 2 times itself is 2 to the 4th plus 2. If I multiply this green square root to the second term, this cancels the denominator, so you're left with negative 2t to the 4th. And then all over uh, t to the 4th plus 2 times root t to the 4th plus 2. So just simplify the top 2 minus t to the 4th all over t to the 4th plus 2 root t to the 4th plus 2. And you have 2 to the 4th plus 2 here and here, so you can combine them into one term if you wanted. Because that's like an exponent of 1. This is an exponent of a half, so add them together. So t to the 4th to the 3 halves. Um, whether it's this way or this way, that's up to you. Uh, the book kind of flip-flops between the two of them. I would usually probably just stop here because then you're done. Um, but, you know, it's your preference. Okay, so that's going to do it for section 3.4, the chain rule. Uh, so you are definitely going to want to practice these derivatives because the chain rule has now opened the door to practically any type of function uh, I could think of to give you for a derivative. Um, because now you're using quantities inside of functions and we've never done that before. So go ahead and give the homework a try. Um, so make sure you practice them and probably maybe more than normal uh, because you want to be confident in all of these things. So don't just do like two problems and call it a day. Uh, do, I would do the entire homework assignment um, unless you're just really good at it uh, right off the start. Um, so give it a shot, email me if you have questions and that'll do it.